This is actually a historic area, one of the first early mid-century developments planned by A. Quincy Jones that was developed in the 50s. They developed this concept of small mid-century homes with sloped roofs and beautiful views, more organic colors, and a coherent style. The style is definitely part of the land. You don't feel the houses don't impose. That was the idea. And I mean, our house is, I think, a great example of that. And we purposely painted it dark to really blend into the landscape. And I mean, even if you actually look at how much house you see from the road, it's just a sliver, actually. I know, it's, it's just tucked down a few feet, but it makes a big difference. Yeah. And then the same thing for the unit. You don't even basically see it from here. Oh, right. That's interesting. I mean, it's, it's a small house for four people. We didn't need to have an enormous amount more space. We just needed bedrooms for the boys. This can be approached from this side. The boys can come in the front gate here, walk past the house in the front, and then get onto that porch on that side. So they really can come and go on their own. Yeah, wow, the ideal for a teen. Yeah. You probably couldn't have said, we want another bedroom, let's build up or out. Um, we could have. It would have been very time consuming and it would have destroyed the original design integrity of the house, which we really liked. And so we didn't need to have an enormous amount more space. We have two teens. And so I wanted to put something that would essentially nestle in here and create a little bit of a compound with the landscape. Because this kind of creates a, a this courtyard now. Yeah, that was the idea, is, is to give us our own little, little domain here. I had heard word of mouth in the architecture world about cover. I've got a very busy practice myself. The analogy, I think, of an automobile, I basically just wanted to find a product I liked, buy it, and have them put it on the site. And that's, that's what we did. How easy was it to get something back here? It was relatively easy that it, the things were, were loaded in through the, through the street at that end, and the pieces aren't that big. The panel system is what made it very practical for this. It's loaded, panels loaded on a truck. It's flat panel. It's not like some of the systems you're, you're putting in the whole house. That would have been almost impossible. This would have been quite difficult to do with a conventional prefab where you have a large room size box that you crane in with a large crane. The winding, narrow streets coming up here would have just been very hard. So the, the panelization allows us to build virtually anywhere. Yeah, so well, the panels that come from the factory, it's, it, it's flat packed, right? So it's, it's not like you're shipping a huge part. So this was a panel, this was a, you know, the door, panel, door. So you can pretty much actually see uh, and then you know, you've got panels here, you've got uh, four panels in the bedroom. It's just a, a lightweight assembly process. And they come together how? So it's all steel structure and it's bolted together. So instead of having nails every six inches, you have a few bolts in the corners. The interior is panelized as well. So it's not the conventional drywall of spreading the plaster over a wall. All the interior walls are finished panels and they go on the same way the exterior panels are. Yeah, everything is pre-cut from the factory. It's really an assembly process on site. You're just assembling parts, screwing, bolting, but you're assembling parts just like you would you know, Legos. It's, it's really like Legos for homes. So you see the seams that are just used as the lighting strips? Yeah. Exactly. And you see the seams, which is fine, and which just works with the design and kind of integrates the outside and the inside. All the panels, the closet also come made in the factory. That's one of the things we really liked is a lot of efficient storage where I have desks for the kids, there are bookshelves and hanging space and drawers. Each of the bedrooms has a sliding door, so they can come in and out from their own doors. There's little magnetic locks, so each door opens, unlocks independently. And then there's a shared entry vestibule in the middle, which leads to the bathroom. 
and and then each of the, each of the bedrooms. Is that, it feels like there's less hallway that way. Yeah, so there's just this vestibule space, which is nice to come in, take your shoes off, or it's meant to be very efficient. I mean, we were trying to keep it as tight as possible because there just isn't a lot of room on this site, so we didn't want to use have any more corridor space than necessary. So do both boys just love being out here? Yeah, they're very happy here. We knew that the days of them in their bunk beds in one room, you know, like the size of this room, imagine a bunk bed with two six foot tall teenage boys. It was just not a sustainable thing. You know, we had a lot of other things going on, but then my wife and I figured we, we needed to do this to take the pressure off the house and they're getting older fast and we needed to do it as quickly as possible to let them get out in the house and have their own, basically their own little apartment. Wow, look at this. Wait, are you filming? Oh my God, Daddy's filming. It just makes them feel more like grown-ups. You can bring a friend out in here and not have to go past mom and dad. And This would make such a great studio. <laughs> Yeah. It's funny because you hear about sort of man cave idea, but this is almost like a teen cave. Or yeah, <laughs> Did you have... it, it's, it's that. But, you know, we had to keep in mind they're, they're growing up fast. They're yeah. in college, so we didn't want to make it too compact. Mm -hmm. But it's relative to the scale of the neighborhood and the original houses of this. This bathroom is just great. Well, the bathroom is very efficient. The wall material in the shower is actually Rather than having individual tiles, this is all single panels of waterproof material. And so no seams, top to bottom, side to side. The detailing of this is very clean and simple. It's a bit of a light box, right? With the... You know, this was one of the options, which is to have obscure glass here so we get lots of natural light, a little bit of the color, but maintain your privacy. Yeah. And then again, it's this seamless material on the floor. Same thing with the sink and the counter here. It's all kind of seamlessly put together. And then there's, there's the, I like the, the warmth of the bamboo and the wood and the wood floor of the shower and the cabinet. The floor to ceiling frosted window in the bathroom was actually such a popular feature that we've now made it a standard. Every single cover the bathroom now has. It's, it's because just, it was popular. It was so popular. And that wood floor almost feels like an outdoor shower. It's a sophisticated detail for a simple, modest bedroom unit like this. And you see some of these details, like the way the plugs are put in and the switches. They're integrated in a way which you just can't do in conventional construction. Why, why is it difficult to do it in conventional construction like that? Well, because you're cutting something into drywall and then you have to put a faceplate on it to, because you can't cut something as perfectly as they can in a factory. With the computer-controlled machinery, a much more precise cut can be made. So because this is not drywall, it's a, it's a board that the plug or the light switch boxes can be perfectly fit in without any extra trim. These are rugs that we've, you know, some of them are from Turkey and yeah, some of them are from thrift stores. And, you know, they work really well on the wood floor. <clears throat> It's, it really feels different than other units I've seen, other ADUs. I think so the distribution, there's, it's also the placement of the windows. You know? Yeah, it really splits the room open and feels like part of, you know, my DNA is in the mid-century California architecture. And so this flow of in, indoor-outdoor is an essential part of that. And, and these floor-to-ceiling doors do that really nicely. And it's nice because you didn't do all window again. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, I don't also like that fishbowl. And so it's just getting that balance between a nice connection to the outside and yet also a certain amount of enclosure. So that wall in both these bedrooms is solid storage for privacy and it's balancing human comfort. And you know what, why people live up here is a beautiful connection to nature. And you frame the tree here. So the placement of the house is interesting. Like that was a choice. It was a very tight fit because the property is small. There's a hillside behind us and we didn't want to get too close to the house and we wanted to preserve this oak tree. So fitting it into the site was one of the biggest challenges. And I, I like the fact that we still get a glimpse of the street because we don't 
really want to feel like we're just in the wilderness. Yeah. So seeing the people go and walk their dogs or ride their bikes past, it's nice to, to you know, have a little bit of contact. This is like a lifestyle of a different era. This is the 50s scale. And the 50s, the standards were, were smaller. Post-war, things were built very economically. People were looking for small, inexpensive houses. We're comfortable with that size. Some people, when they come into this neighborhood, they want a 5,000 square foot house and they want today's inflated standards in some ways, trying to impose it on this really intimately scaled neighborhood. And it doesn't really work. And so we feel like when you're here, you, you really have to buy into the whole thing. The scale, the connection to nature, the intimacy of it, and not try to cram a giant house on this. This neighborhood just isn't suitable for that. And as my wife re refers to, she moved here from New York, she refers to our house as basically an, a dream New York apartment. Because it's almost more apartment scaled than it is house scaled. But that was that era. L.A. was growing very rapidly, and that's one of the things that the modernist architects were trying to do, was find a new way of living for the returning veterans that were reasonably priced, and so the lots had to be small. The construction type is very simple and economical. To me, this project is a contemporary version of that. The whole facade feels really consistent. You don't, there's not much extra material. It just feels very... Yeah, I mean, that's we like the simplicity of it. And, you know, it's part of what appealed to me is it's a very well-engineered object, which is one of the things that I was looking for was there's a tremendous amount of waste involved in con conventional construction. And there's very little in this process because everything is put together in the factory basically just assembled on the site. It's designed in a computer, and so it's engineered like a car or an industrial design product. It's not like sticking two by fours and drywalls and then lighting and, and putting together these pieces that aren't really designed to go together. Everything in this is really designed to go together the way everything goes smoothly put together and zero detailing. All of that is very hard to do with conventional construction. The way the shades are done, normally it's kind of awkward to create a shade pocket for that. This can be, you know, built right in, so it's much cleaner. That's one of the things that appealed to me was just having this very clean engineered object where everything works together seamlessly and I don't have to figure it all out. And this is just to have privacy when you need yeah, it. Yeah, it's for it's for privacy. Yeah. Our sun. It could be it could be sun. Yeah, I mean it does help. It definitely helps uh, in the summer to have these closed when you're not using the space. Yeah, it, it definitely saves on the energy use. What we're really working on is like how do you make homes and the kind of integration that you would normally see in multi-million dollar homes? How do you make that available to everyone? Right? How to make that easy? So you don't need a team of specialists and consultants and 30 different subcontractors coming to your site. You know, I mean, normally you have a, a blind installer and that's a separate person that you have to work with to go install these, whereas this comes as part of our system. It's just integrated from the start. So it keeps the cost down? It keeps the cost down. It makes it way faster. I mean, we assembled this in two months. It looks like this when we're done, minus the furniture. We were building this for teenagers, but we also wanted the family life to really still be in the house. So there's no kitchen here, it's just sleeping quarters and a bathroom. Yeah, and no real hangout space. It's yeah, no, yeah, no bathroom. But one of the things that we observe is they practically live on their beds. They sit on their beds with their laptops, do their emails or look at their videos, streaming TV. The technology, as it's evolving, has actually made them almost more contained. I, you know, traditionally I thought, you know, yes, they definitely need a desk. I actually don't really even use the desk so much because everything is done on the laptop. Yeah. Okay. It's interesting how there's a certain age, I mean, how it's hard for a house to be everything every, yeah. all the time, right? Exactly, like, yeah.
there's only a short period where you have young kids in the house, and then you have this yeah. period of teens. And yeah, yeah, it, and their needs are really different. I mean, when they're when they're little, it was great to have them in bunk beds in one room, and they could cl be close to us, which we wanted and they wanted. And then when they get to be teens, they want more freedom. It's funny the idea of a, a non-connected house. The idea that you know the bedrooms don't have to be part of the house. Yeah, especially in our climate. Yeah, it's it's very much so. Uh, the notion of, and some architects have explored that idea of the notion of a house as a village, that everything doesn't have to be in one building, particularly in our climate, and things can have different identity, different levels of privacy, different functions. And the life of a house takes place over many different phases of life and going from you know, babies to young children to teenagers to adults. And you really can't expect one thing to perfectly function for all those phases. And so I'm a big believer in flexibility and there's a, actually what's one of the principles of sustainability is loose fit, long life. And so if you design something perfectly for a function, it's going to be more obsolete quicker. Or if you design something that's kind of looser, it's going to be more flexible and changeable over time. Did you think about the next phase for this, like when they, they're grown and, and on their own? Like, what happens next with this? I think it'll work great as a guest house, and maybe even one is, one's a guest bedroom and one is more like a living room, and treat it more like an apartment, and we can legally use it as an accessory dwelling. It is actually a legal dwelling. And if one of us needs a work at home office space, we, it has that. So we feel it's, this is one phase of life, but I think it's going to be very flexible to use it in different ways. And it's also a part of your property, the square foot you add to your house. Yeah. So it's just like turning our small two bedroom house. It's just like turning that into a four bedroom house.